but the attackers will move to different applications that you have on your system. So back to my caching point, when you think about caching, you need to be thinking about caching all of the systems that you run in your organization, because not patching one has just left the door open to an attacker. Highly targeted attacks, there's been several good examples this year, notably the attacks against uh, Google earlier this year, where, and this is now public domain, part of the attack vector were that senior people, key people in the company, got emails coming from their social networks. And part of the attack vehicle now that we're seeing is that people are doing reconnaissance. So who are your Facebook friends? Who are you linked into? Because if you receive an email from one of your Facebook friends, you're probably more likely to open it than you are a cold call email. Likewise, we see conference lists uh, being used as um, reconnaissance, particularly if you're going to a particular type of trade conference where an attacker may be looking for particular knowledge about an industry. And I'll come on to a, a different uh, uh, point shortly. Um, and likewise, people's home accounts being compromised because people still move media between their home and work. D distributed denial of service attack, okay, it's still there. And uh, we've seen various examples over the last year of this being used, particularly in political, uh, politically motivated attacks against other countries. Um, Korea being a very good example. Um, what I'd like to do is to, I think, always pertinent when I come to a conference. How many people have been to a conference where they've picked up a USB key for conference now? Hang on. Okay. Let's just revisit that one in a minute. So, this is an attack that uh, is now two years old, but not many people seem to have actually picked up on it. Um, and this was a compromised USB key, went to a machine, it compromised that machine, and the machine tried to phone home for updates. And if it was successful in phoning home, um, what it did is it then exfiltrated data out to places unknown. Um, the interesting thing about this was, if it actually identified that that machine didn't have internet connectivity, and I think for a minute the type of machines that may not do, so it's government machines or machines in closed organisations, it waited until another USB key went into that machine when it would compromise that key, exfiltrate data onto that key, and then wait until that key was then put on an internet connectable machine. So just think of the scenario I just said about you get the conference key, you take it to work, you download the conference brochure, you don't think, hmm, what should I do with this USB key? I'll take it home because it's always handy to have USB keys at home. You connect it into your home computer and your home computer exfiltrates data from your work computer. Um, very clever. Unfortunately, the USB key that was found was given out at the conference. And it was given out at the conference targeting specific points of industry. And it's about thinking about the threat um, in a holistic way. Um, I always like to talk about hardware with added value and counterfeit products because it's still an issue around e crime. Um, this is, and I, the FBI kindly of put this up on the internet. This is a counterfeit Cisco router and a genuine Cisco router. Why would you care? Well, I do quite a lot of international travel, and I really would care if it was a counterfeit router on the aircraft to run the flight control systems. Um, hardware with added value, again, espionage targets, some hardware, compromised and exfiltrates data as an added byproduct of what you've bought. So what does this mean? Well, the first is that actually defense in depth means something. So you have networks, you have organizations. What are you doing to gather intelligence from your networks? What are you, where is your sensor network? Because the bottom line is you've got one. The question is, are you actually using it? Um, also, it's about agility. It's about thinking about and making decisions in fast time. So defense in depth should really mean something. Um, a very nice slide, I quite often put up, and it's not my slide, but it works pretty well. If you go back to 1997 and look at how the threat evolved, we started off with sort of obvious two-road viruses because they could. 
that agenda hackers who would hack into websites because they didn't like something that their website stood for, whether it be a government, a company, the police. Then we also fame hackers who did it because they wanted to show they could write better hacking software than anybody else. Then we sort of got on to when criminal enterprises worked out this was a good way of earning money. And finally, national interests such as state-sponsored and targeted attacks. The area where we're seeing most growth are in those top three growths, who also happen to be the most capable. But I always ask you to just reflect as yourselves as an organisation to say, well, where are we? Who might see us as a target in our organisation? Because it sort of leads on um, to the fact that how you're attacked can have some reputational issues. This is just something from a couple of weeks ago which I found um, about the Strathclyde Police website, which had been compromised. And reputational risk and your reputation as a safe place to do business could actually be really important to you. Which brings me nicely to, firstly, three things you should do. And the first is patches I've talked about. Um, and you probably would say, well, you're from Microsoft, you would say this. But if you actually use newer software, no matter whether it's ours or anyone else's, the security is better in newer stuff. So if you're operating versions that say two versions ago or are out of support, then the likelihood is you're operating an insecure system. And no matter how good the rest of your system is, you may be vulnerable. And finally, when you do think about changing your system, do it very carefully and go to 64 bit architectures because they are inherently more secure. Now, I always try when I do this sort of talk not to frighten people because I've heard too many IT security talks where at the end of it, the audience go, it's all too difficult. Whatever we do, they're going to get us, so we won't do anything. And that's the last message I want to give. For every organisation in this room, there's a risk management decision. And that risk management decision is what is our business? So what do we want to do? What's the function of what we do? The next question is, what level of security do we need to actually function in that way? And the third part is, how much money have we got to secure our business? For example, if you're a company that is doing e-business, then you need to interact with your public, your customers. So building a firewall that means no one can communicate with you may give you wonderful security, but you'll go bankrupt. So it's a question about finding that right balance for you. Now, the bit I'm going to get on my soapbox for is I rarely see that decision getting high enough in organisations. It's often seen as an IT problem, and it's a problem that is pushed to the IT department. Just saw our IT risk out. These are from companies, whether they're small or large, or even bits of government, that will take other decisions up to the board or the managing director or the proprietor about financial risk, about business risk, Yet somehow IT risk is something that someone else sorts now. What I would urge you is on whatever side of business, ask yourself an honest question. When was the last time we reviewed our risk in this area? And how did we review the balance of opportunity by them to do business on the internet, which is a great place to be, great place to get public messages out, versus the threat to our operation model? And how did we then strike the right balance about the response? And do the people in your organisation understand how you've got that response? And did they understand how they execute against that? So did the IT department understand the balance of risk that's acceptable to you in your organisation? And don't just do it once. This is a really fast-moving industry. So this type of review cycle and risk management decisions, something that should be repeated, I think, probably every six months or so, because the level of threat in the environment changes, and your business imperatives may change. And finally, the last thing is to make sure that there is someone in your organisation who actually is accountable to this. And if you outsource all of your IT, that doesn't mean you can outsource this problem. I come back to the Strathclyde Police website. I've no idea whether that was run in-house or otherwise because it doesn't matter. If there is a, threat, if a successful attack in your organisation, if you outsource your infrastructure, it will still be you who are the people who take the flag for that. So I hope the message is